Welcome to the Produce Moms Podcast, where we believe there is a produce mom in all of us. I'm Lori Taylor, founder and CEO of the Produce Moms. For 10 years, I sold fresh produce to over 300 grocery stores in the U.S. And today, my team and I are fully focused on inspiring people to eat more fruits and vegetables. This show is just one of the ways that we hope to inspire you and your family to eat more produce and live a better life. If you like what you're hearing on the podcast, join our community of almost 40,000 in all 50 states and over 30 countries by visiting theproducemoms.com slash subscribe. And be sure to subscribe and leave us a review on iTunes. Thanks for being here. Enjoy today's show. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Produce Moms podcast. My name is Lori Taylor. I'm the founder of the Produce Moms. I'm the host of the show, and I'm abundantly blessed uh, to welcome incredible people week after week to, to share their story, their passion, and, and their skill set that makes the wonderful world of fresh produce what it is for us all. I mean, it's such a wholesome and, and amazing industry, and there is so much that goes in to bringing our fruits and vegetables into our home kitchen and to do it in a safe and transparent fashion. And today's guest, we are welcoming Karen Long. She is a senior account executive and a digital transformation specialist for iFood Decision Sciences. iFood Decision Sciences is also known as iFood DS. We're going to really dive in to how this technology and this brand, um, they're just absolutely leaders and in, in providing all of us with a completely transparent and safe food supply chain. So Karen, we're so proud that you're here. It's going to be an incredible show where we can just really educate all of our listeners on the importance of supply chain transparency. Welcome. Hi, Lori. Thank you just so much. I am so thrilled to be here, really talking with you, my fellow produce mom. And of course, <laughs> um, you know, all my friends and my colleagues from the produce industry who are listening in. And um, I'm just super excited to share a little bit about me and what I'm doing today and my passion. You know, I've, I've always loved sharing how technology can really be leveraged to, um, you know, not just impact the profitability of businesses, but really improve the quality of life for us, the consumers. Right. And I have worked in lots of different industries, um, automotive, medical. More recently, I did a um, uh, about a year with a company that developed some really amazing AI technologies that helped how consumers could interact with companies. And then I came to iFood DS really to work with a lot of the smartest folks I've worked with, but some other companies in the past. Uh, but quite frankly, it was just a brilliant fit for me to come here because mm -hmm. as you know, yep, we've talked a, a little bit before, you know, I'm a produce mom. I have six amazing children. Amazing. Um, I, <laughs> they're, they're, they're not amazing all the time, but they're amazing. You know, there's, um, some, some have moved into adulthood, right? But um you know, I'm, I'm that produce mom. I am truly focused on the very best in health and nutrition for my family. And, you know, I'll share with you a little bit today about how iFood DS is really very much committed to that same goal. So this was really right. easy. And I feel so, so it just felt like you were, you were in the right place culturally and, and with your passions and Oh my, um, my goodness, goodness, the diversity of your professional background, there is, I mean, you're definitely bringing a lot of wonderful skill set and, and, an, and a keen awareness of how important technology is in all processes and in all industries. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, I'm working with some of the most dedicated food uh, uh, professionals that I've ever dealt with, uh, the folks in the food industry, these, these produce folks who have been doing it for years. They yeah. are just so passionate and I say, you know, passion only second to my fellow produce moms for their families. But yes, it's just great to be surrounded yeah. by these people. Love it. Yeah. And I'll tell you, I mean, Karen, you and I, we've met through women's networking um, events and digital forums in our industry. And um, one reason I was immediately drawn to you besides, you know, the fact that we connect with motherhood, but um, I, I have been taught by my time working in fresh produce and most specifically when I was employed in the supply chain, working at wholesale distribution, food safety is really number one. And 
that has to be everyone's top priority. And with that hand in hand goes transparency. And iFoodDS has a really, um, you know, just kind of a profound history and how they got started. And I'd love for you right now to share that with our guests. Like, tell us more about iFood Decision Sciences and why this company exists. Yeah, for sure. You know, food safety being at the root of all of it. And I know I'll say a million puns in this conversation. There's no shortage in the produce industry, you know, <laughs> at the root and, you know, right for the picking and all that. But yeah, iFood D- DS was, you know, we were really born in the kind of food safety space um, from a consulting group initially that was front and center during that uh, just awful spinach E. coli outbreak in 2006. Yes. I know you were you were kind of front and center on that I was at the sales well. desk. Yeah, I was at the oh sales desk. Gosh. It was, uh, it yeah. was unlike anything, um, you know, my, my career has ever seen in this industry was that 2006 spinach E. coli outbreak. And hopefully we don't see it again, right? So, you know, and right. that's that's the whole purpose. This consulting group really jumped right in and they started working with lots of the various associations then you know, nationally and regionally, just trying to figure out and develop the very best food safety practices to keep that from happening again. And it was determined as they were going through this process with their focus on food safety initiatives is that so very few of the produce companies that were out there, you know, fighting against this and trying to protect against it had adequate technology or tools at their fingertips to really collect and store and retrieve and get access to all of that really critical food safety data that you have to, you know, have at your fingertips to, to mitigate risk. And, you know, then iFood DS was formed in, uh, I guess, 2013 to really provide that technology just to make sure that that could happen. Right. Yeah. And, you know, even even kind of at a more macro level, even uh, technology and agriculture is a it's a it's a huge concern uh, for folks that have been with the podcast for um, and, and I shouldn't say technology and agriculture is a huge concern. It's a huge part of agriculture, but there are some uh, some macro level issues. And one of them is uh, lack of broadband in rural America. And we're getting better. But if you're a fan of this podcast, you, you you more than likely remember the episode. I'm talking about episode 29 when we rep, when we re, uh, welcomed one of the executives from Microsoft who was talking about that you you just can't farm in America without broadband and how that is like this at the at the helm of a lot of the different issues that are and threats to our safe food supply chain. So we're making progress with that as a nation. And yeah, uh, yeah, but I definitely wanted to call out that episode for anyone that wants to hear more about that. Uh, Way Scroll way back in the archives, episode 29, Mary Snap, one of the corporate VPs at Microsoft. And uh, Karen, so wow, the (laughs) E. coli outbreak, they they came together and your company, iFoodDS was founded in 2013. And I know from following you and following your great, great company, 2020 was a breakthrough year for you all as well. Tell us more about that. Oh, yeah. You know, I, you know, it was a breakthrough year. It was a tough year. It was a tough year for, I think, everybody in the industry, but it was unique that we all had these kind of challenges to solve. But one of the, you know, the critical moments in, in 2020 was through the acquisition. iFood went out and acquired a company called Harvest Mark and, You know, I'll give you a little bit of detail on that, but, you know, we just talked about how up until last year when we made this acquisition, iFood was really focused and providing this really excellent, much needed service to our growers or packers or processors, right? Those folks early in the supply chain, helping them really focus on food safety in the supply chain. Um, But you, you and I know that the supply chain is much larger, right? And most of our sure. listeners probably know that too. It's much larger than after something's packaged or boxed up and getting ready for resale. It goes on beyond that. Many, many and stakeholders. Yep. Many, yep. And it's so, I mean, I've seen so many, since coming to this space, I've seen so many interesting kind of um, Visio diagrams of what a supply chain actually looks like. There's so many steps in between. And so our goal was in, in to really kind of complete this mission of creating a complete view of that supply chain, a complete and comprehensive, you know, safer food supply chain would be to enable transparency, like a true transparency. And so we acquired Harvest Mark in 2020. Um, a little bit about Harvest Mark in, in 2006, that same awful E. coli outbreak, um, there was an initiative at that time 
to really define a standard that could help improve uh, the, the what they call traceability of a product up and back. You know, where, where did it come yeah. from? Where is it gone? And where's it? Yeah. PTI, so, <laughs> correct? Produce Traceability Initiative? Yes. yes. Okay. Yep. Exactly. PTI. So in that traceability initiative, Harvest Mark was right there. Again, front row. They were working very closely with the produce associations and they essentially really helped define that standard. They were one of the first and only companies on the scene to really kind of build some um, some guardrails around that standard. So they're an incredibly, very well accomplished company. They've got Pioneers, 22 years. really. Um, I mean, the, don't wouldn't you say? I mean, if they were involved at the ground floor, this is a pioneer the, type of company. The pioneer thought leaders, like, yeah. and but but you know, I want to say while they're a leader in traceability and quality management, that by itself, traceability by itself, doesn't mean transparent food chain. Just knowing where something came from or where it's going is important. We, we, there's, I don't want to, sure. you know, yeah, it's diminish critical. the importance yeah. of it, right? Yeah. But with the iFood detail, the granular detail in that food safety data combined with the traceability, it's that stitching together. That's what's happening right now. And that's what's so exciting. Once you stitch that together, it becomes transparent. You get the detail combined with where it's going. And suddenly you have a really powerful transparent supply chain. Without it, we're still just you know, completely opaque. We can't really see mm-hmm. what's happening. I feel like yeah, that's what sure. every, yeah, I feel like that's what every consumer wants, Karen. I mean, it's what <laughs> anecdotally, I mean, I know you probably live in this data and you're not going to, you know, speak on hunch the way I am right now, but anecdotally, I feel like that it is a top concern for everyone. We produce moms like us, we want to know where our food is from. We want to know how it's sourced, how it's raised, how they're treating the farm labor, all that type of stuff. Like transparency is top of mind. And in the information era, I mean, like we're used to getting information on everything that's important (laughs) to our households instantaneously now, you know? And so that's, it's, uh, I don't know. Tell us more about that. Like, why is, why is transparency so important? Why are you, why is everyone at iFoodDS so committed to this? Well, it does really feel like, you know, we're always in kind of this hunt in the chase for more information. We want it now. We're going to turn to it. And I think, like you said, you know, we're not, you know, you're not really going on a hunch as much as it seems. You know, we can talk anecdotally about how did we get here? How did we start to become so demanding to have all the details at our fingertips, right? So, um, you know, I like to give the example, kind of an analogy, if you will, of, of Amazon and the role that they've played in really enlightening us as consumers um, to show us the benefits of what happens when everything's completely transparent. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm almost always amazed when I go shopping on Amazon, and this is by no means a commercial for the company, but I think everybody's there, right? Mm-hmm. Um, You log on and you can see provided by the suppliers or vendors, you can see details, sourcing, specifications, reviews, and and then they go on beyond that, right? So you see the the lower end of the the supply chain, and then you can see when it was shipped, how it was shipped, where it is, where it is, like, actually, not too long ago, I just didn't realize they were actually showing me on the map where my product was before it got to my house, and then they left a picture of it on my front door, which is Amazing. It's complete transparency. So we have been trained and we have been told that we can demand it, right? That it, it's largely um, sure. uh, you know, it available. Exists. What yes. that, yeah. Totally. But what, the, what it's done for us is it has provided us confidence. I mean, if I'm not sure if something will come in in time, I will order it from Amazon because I know through transparency, nothing will be vague, nothing will be opaque. Mm-hmm. And um you know, you know, it's all front and center. We we want that same kind of transparency in our food supply chain, that same kind of confidence to know that we um, can identify the products that we want to consume and bring home to our families and that they're wholesome and that they're healthy, that, you know, they're as safe as they as, as, um, the data can share with us that they're safe. You know, I, I read somewhere and I thought it was kind of funny. I thought it'd be cute. Um, there was a, somebody had written that the only thing that us moms want to be opaque is our winter leggings and our red wine. Like, <laughs> you know, you don't want to be able to see through it. Oh, but when it comes gosh. to being okay, right? Yep. It can't be, it can't be about the details of the food we're going to consume, right? Right. So um, for, a, for a grower, a supplier, a retailer, if you want to be competitive, 
if you want to go up against kind of this um, <clears throat> paradigm that has been supported by, you know, we'll call it the Amazon effect, this confidence built through transparency. Um, and if you want to win the love from a very discerning audience, and, and I'm sure you probably already know this, I'll just share that that very discerning audience is primarily made up of women who account for 93% of all food purchases. Right. What? So Say that 93%. again, Karen. <laughs> I know. <laughs> women, go. Women account account for 93% of all food purchases here in the US. So wow. um yeah. So that's the those are the consumers that are that our growers, suppliers, retail, the, the supply chain has to appeal to. And I'd highly recommend that if you want to win their hearts. You meet their demands and their demands today are trans full transparency. Mm -hmm. So, you know, now more than ever, we want to know, especially, you know, this, this time we're kind of locked up at home. We can't go through, walk the aisles, sniff things, squeeze things, touch things, read labels all the time. We still want to know where are the ingredients, where were they grown, where were they raised? How was it produced? Was it ethical, right? Mm -hmm. or do they have yeah. sustainability? We want that confidence and we want to feel, feel secure that the food that we bring home to our babies will pose zero risk to them, right? So okay. that really means that in transparency, Lori, labels like this product was sourced from Mexico or this product was grown in Montana or this, that's not, an, that's not complete transparency, right? Um, Amazon's taught us that we deserve more. We want more, you know, and not again, not just Amazon, but others have taught us we, we can demand that transparency is available. There was a, a study a couple of years ago that showed that over 37 consumers, 37% of consumers would just completely switch to another brand. If that other brand had more transparent information, I mean, not, not better quality, better looking, better feeling, better smelling, tasting, if you were looking at two brands, similar product, if one provided more information over the brand that you already used, you would abandon your brand of choice and you'd move to another brand. I believe um, it. Yeah. Significant, yeah. right? And similar. Yeah. 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 If I'm looking at information, I'm like, huh, I've already always used this, but this product tells me a little bit more. It's a similar kind of study, um, but even more compelling here is that you know, we know that 86% of millennial moms would not just you know maybe switch the brand. They're going to spend more money on a brand, 86% of millennial moms. This is important because millennial moms currently make up about a quarter of the purchasing power in produce. Yep. Right? So 86% of that quarter is going to say, I will pay more for your product if you share details with me, if you're completely transparent with me. There right? you go. And so we're at a point. Yeah, my, my hunch is validated. My <laughs> your hunch is validated. Yes. Oh, you are you're super smart. <laughs> your hunch is validated, right? Yeah, yeah you know, and the growers want to share this. I'm not suggesting For sure they that. Do. Yes. Yeah, I'm not. Our our supply chain is wicked smart, and they're they're out there working tirelessly to grow healthy fruits and vegetables, and they want to share it, right? So. But all they've had up until now is like really limited technology. The pipe has not, the, the groundwork has not been laid. The, the, the pathway is not right. available to them to be able to not only, you know, more easily collect this information about, you know, the, the, the processing of their food, but to share it directly with the consumer. So what are they yeah. supposed to do? Yeah. I mean, this yeah. is relatively, this is a relatively new frontier for American agriculture uh -huh. comes back to a lot of different things. Obviously the technology is evolving, but second, what I mentioned previously about broadband and rural America. Um, and I think some of that was exasperated and understood when all of our kids went into virtual learning, you know, uh, people realized oh, yeah. oh, that, gosh. wow, we do have a, we do have a broadband access issue in America, but, yeah, um, sure. in rural America, especially. So, uh, it, it is improving. I mean, I, I can say with confidence, there continues to be federal initiatives and ad announcements and advancements um, in each and every state where food is grown and raised, where agriculture exists, which is frankly all of them. Um, but that it, we are improving. Um, and it's very exciting to see technologies like iFood Decision Sciences just take off and lead the way. So this is, this is exciting. But I got to ask you, Karen, I mean, you, this again is another one of those anecdotal thoughts, but I, I don't think that I don't, I, we battle it at the produce moms. 
uh, consumers don't like the thought of technology and agriculture being, you know, and working together. They don't really want technology and science in their agriculture. And, and we try very hard, you know, sourcing folks like yourself to be part of this podcast and bringing forward like stories from the supply chain to share with consumers. We try very hard to help educate folks on the ways that technology is actually advancing agriculture and enhancing the consumer experience. Um, but I have to ask you, does, does agriculture exist without technology? Yeah, for sure. And, you know, of course it's going to exist. I mean, we're going to have farmers of, and growers and, and producers of any kind with the ability to continue to grow our fresh fruits and vegetables without, you know, state-of-the-art cutting edge, you know, <laughs> it's I food DS technology, right? Um, but the, you know, the tech, the food will still be there, but the process for delivering it to consumers and the technology used to get it there has to evolve, right? Mm -hmm. It's, it just has to evolve over, you know, for, for lots of reasons that we've already mentioned, but many others, you know, we talk about increasing population. How do we grow more food and still keep it safe to feed the population? Increasing consumer demands, like we talked about um, the Amazon effect, or, you know, consumers want more information. How are you supposed to get them more information without the technology or the evolution of technology? Um, resource limitations, and this is really kind of a big one. Look at what happened last year. We have people out sick. We had factories that had to close down. And we still had lots of people that needed more food delivered to them than ever. I mean, because they, they had right. their kids out of the school. The food insecurity just became running rampant, right? Mm -hmm. So we have to evolve, you know, evolve technology to get there, to meet these demands, um, to do more with less. And so, you know, more and more and more companies are beginning to turn to digital resources to make that happen. Um, you know, there was one study I read the other day, just kind of side tangent here, that said 81% um, of people who have a smartphone, and by the way, that's nearly everybody anymore. I used to right. do a lot of work in AI, and people would say, a lot of people still have flip phones. And I'm like, third world countries will get a smartphone before they'll get clean water in some instances. So right, right. smartphones are, <laughs> everybody's got a smartphone. So um, it, it, the study showed that 81% of smartphone users were using online information. They were turning to technology. 81% before, you know, they, they turned online and that was having an impact um, on their healthier eating choices. So they were using their smartphones, 81% of them using their smartphones to improve their eating choices. That means, you know, Pinterest, recipes, um, information about a grower or a product, but they were going online and using technology to get that information. And yeah. I don't think anybody is going to disagree if I say agriculture, obviously, probably pays one of the foremost, most significant roles in healthy eating choices, right? Fresh fruits and veggies. That's what we're all here talking about. Yeah. So all, all roads, all roads of wellness lead right back to the produce department. Right. Exactly. So yeah. therefore, it's kind of like, you know, the focus on agriculture, um, you know, you know, we can say retailers for later. Let's just see if we're just talking about growers and producers using technology. Um, their efforts of managing and monitoring all of their food safety practices have all been around for a while, right? There, you know, as a matter of fact, there's been quite a bit of legislation over the years that has required that our growers and our farmers keep records. So they keep records. The okay. avoid of technology, they keep records. They're writing things down on paper. You know, they're keeping them in binders, they're keeping them on their shelves, but they're keeping those records. That, with technology, has evolved. And, um, I'm, you know, I see when I go in to visit a lot of our clients and prospects and, and people that we consult with, we look that they've moved a lot of those paper records into spreadsheets. But that spreadsheet still sits in somebody's computer in the ranch, right? Yeah. So there was an evolution, but there's even more of a, an evolution here because, that creates an obvious challenge in the event of a recall or trace back, right? I mean, we, what are you going to do? Mail a thumb drive via, you know, UPS? You know? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, how am I going to find it, right? Yeah, like, th yeah. This is a case in point of the evolution of technology. I'm glad it's no longer in paper or binders or it's moving to that way where we're getting. But, you know, if you have it in a server, if you don't have it in a cloud-based environment, if you're not evolving technology and using the best technology, I like to say the iFood DS technology, cloud-based, right. mobile. If you're not enabling real-time collection 
and real-time access of all of those safety records through advancements in technology, then will agriculture still exist? Yeah, of course it's gonna be there, but it's gonna be really hard to get to where we need to be to support the ever-increasing demands from our, you know, from our consumer population. Right. So I think yeah. we've I think we've talked, you know, at length with how this benefits consumers, moms like us. Yeah, we want transparency. Sure. You've presented the data. I'd like to dive a little bit deeper with how how does this help the farmers? Yeah. Yeah, so for sure. I'm sure as I'm talking here, if I have any of my grower friends listening, they're like, wow, you make us really feel like we're under the thumb to, to buy your technology. You know, it, it, there's significant benefits. There's there's many of them. I think I, I really like to boil it down to two primary main areas, and I'll talk about them just a little bit for what how it helps the farmer and, you know, how that all kind of circles back to the consumer again. But mm -hmm. um, in these two buckets, one is continuous improvements to their operation, a farming operation. And the other one is about building a brand, right? Mm -hmm. So um, first, we'll start with the first one, you know, uh, in continuous improvements, like all successful businesses, you're going to be a successful business, a grower or a farmer really truly has to be continuously focused on making process improvements to their operations. Um, they, they have to be keeping up with the times. They have to be, you know, reducing costs and, um, you know, increasing revenues, right? And, um, you know, lots of external outside factors. And we've talked about how iFood DS has helped with the collection of that food safety data that they have to collect. Maybe it's because there's legislation and they have to collect it. They have to collect it as, uh, as part of a larger growing enterprise, et cetera, but we can help them do that. But while they're just collecting it, through the use of the iFood DS software, we can continuously validate that the steps that they are taking, the steps that they've already outlined their existing processes, because they're now being managed and monitored in real time, the software can continue validating that the steps were taken. Meaning, you know, I got to manage this whole crew in the field. I got to make sure they're doing the right thing on the trucks. I've got to make sure the right chemicals are being used or not used, et cetera. Right. And when you and reference, Karen, the software you're talking about, that is what iFood DS is. That is what the iFood DS software does. So that yeah. when a farmer is leveraging using mobile phones or tablets to manage their operation throughout the day, they have some guys in the field, maybe that are just um, entering when they go in the field to do some pre-harvest work before they start harvesting the crop and they enter that in. If something falls out of scope, if something goes off the rails that is not you know, in accordance with food safety protocol that the farmers laid out, not us, but that the farmers laid out, the farmer can then get an alert that says, whoa, something's not happening before right. they have to trace back, before they have to get rid of things. They can continually look at that data and make appropriate process improvements, adjustments, if you will, mm -hmm. to make sure that it doesn't happen again. And, and, and that is critical cost savings, and it keeps the whole operation moving forward. And so cost savings the, for farmers typically translates <sighs> to affordable food for moms like us. For us, for sure. Yeah. And and the future of their business. And it, it's you sustainability, know, you be, for sure. Yeah. You don't want to be overly dramatic and say, oh, you know, if they slip up, it's going to end up in recall. That's rare. That doesn't happen. But, you know, there's lots of things that can cost the farmer money if they're skipping over, if they're not making those or monitoring the, the operation to make continuous all the micro process points, All the details. All the yes. tiny ones. And that's the stuff our process our software, you know, the handheld mobile cloud-based technology that we give to farmers to execute all of their regular day-to-day -day food safety that, again, was previously happening in a binder mm -hmm. on a clipboard, mm -hmm. right? You don't get immediate notifications from your clipboard that something fell off the rails. No. But when you're using cloud-based technology, you see it in real time, and that's critical. So that's the operation of the farm. But you know, I don't want to, you know, retailers and marketers are really responsible for the brand, but the grower, the farmer really does play a significant part in, in building the brand from the first seat, but before the first seed is put in the ground. Right. Yeah. And that's the second main bucket. I think that's how we really help farmers building stronger brands. Yes. You know, all of this these is, folks this, you, you've opened Pandora's box with me now, Karen, this is like my top uh -oh. passion. So <laughs> build a good brand. I mean, yeah. you have, you have the, you complete opportunity to do it, right? Yeah. You just got to have the right tools. These growers work tight 
tirelessly. I am just in awe when I go and I visit these facilities. It's and amazing. Like, wow, yep. the passion, the hard work and the effort into doing what they do, you know, components of the iFood solution enable all of that hard work to be documented and then shared in its glorious detail through transparency. That's what we were talking about, through transparency. They can leverage our technology to then share up through the supply chain with people buying their product from the farm, mm -hmm. the detail, their commitments to sustainability, the details about organic you know, farming practices. And you know, one, one of the other pieces that I thought was really interesting is that they can, you know, this last year I saw it happen. There's a lot of farmers that are spending quite a bit of time support, despite all hardship and efforts over the last year, they're still supporting their communities by donating to local charities, anything oh, yeah. they have left over, anything that's extra. We see that. Why not keep that kind of stuff documented and share that with mm -hmm. your growers and your buyers and inevitably the consumers so that they can see all of the selflessness and all of the good work. It's not always all about food safety, right? You can build a brand through the positivity and you can build a brand by not subjecting yourself to any negative news, That's recalls right. or food safety. Right? And it's so important that it's done and housed in a digital way for so many reasons. Yeah. I mean, obviously the, the real-time access that consumers demand, as you and I you know, discussed previously at the top of the show, but also... Uh, I mean, it's a changing retail world. There's a there's a retail, there is a real threat to farmer brands with the trend that's happening with private label in the produce department. And I mean, I should have a whole, I could have a whole podcast series on my opinions surrounding that. But, um, you know, I, yeah. I just want to say like to anyone who's listening to us, whether you are a, a grower or producer, or if you are a, if you are a shopper, a consumer like, you know, Karen and I, when we're not, working when we're just doing our mom job. Um, we, yeah, we, um, I mean, it, it's very important that the farmers make the, the investments and that our industry continues to strive to provide farmers with access to these powerful technologies so that their stories are never lost. We cannot rely on packaging. We have to, we have to lean into technology. And, you know, Lori, I think it's an amazing opportunity that they lean into technology, that mm -hmm. they adopt the technology, that mm -hmm. they share their stories. But, you know, I'll go one step further. And I'm going to say that I think it's really important that we create a channel, we create an opportunity. And iFoodDS, and, you know, with their partner, you know, with the new acquisition, rather, of HarvestMark and through some of their technologies, we've opened up this ability to really um, allow the consumer to connect back all the way back through the supply chain to the grower like that that's a and critical how, are, how are you guys doing that what is the what's the shopper journey yeah well we're using technology through Q qr codes and yep. you remember that kind of the old I, I, some people still think and i actually um they're not exposed to it right now but i know a lot of people were remembering qr codes as oh those funny little marks that i have to open up my phone i have to get a qr code reader it never scans i can't read it and now i think a, a lot of people who have tried to scan them recently know that every phone iphone ios chrome etc they all have inherent capability to just point your phone at it with a camera and it reads it yeah and it directs you to specific information yeah okay I so mean, qr codes um, that are even I, like a quarter inch in size are able tiny, to be picked up by your phone tiny so, yeah. two millimeters yeah, yeah yeah really small i mean you can fit them on an individual apple if you wanted to right so amazing um but yeah for sure and people it, it's not really new technology, but it hasn't really been leveraged to its fullest capacity. Even right now, I know a lot of um, of a lot of processors and, and some food companies that are affixing QR codes to provide general information about their company, which I'm thrilled to see. I love that they are providing customers with information about their belief system, their sustainability practices, their, you know, the good things that they've done in the community. Everything that we talked about, I think is really important and critical. And people are turning to these QR codes to do it. Um, at iFood DS, we have worked to develop item-specific QR codes, which means that as items are produced, processed, and packaged, and, and getting ready to go out to consumers, um, a unique QR code that is associated with all of that food safety data, or I should, I should clarify and say relevant food safety data, because quite frankly, us as a consumer's we probably wouldn't want to know absolutely everything, but as much as much right. information as the as grower seeds seems relevant, you know, for us. Um, 
that information could kind of be packaged up with that QR code um, for that item, specific item, the thing that I'm holding in my hand. Right. And when that happens, you can now do just about anything you want with it, right? So let's just suppose um, I go and I pick up a package of blueberries and I scan the QR code on it um, and it pops up and it says, thanks for buying these blueberries. And, mm -hmm. and it's specific to the package that I'm holding in my hand because it's associated with the lot and um, you know the PO and the product and the harvest date and all of that stuff is specific to that QR code. And then Let's just say that, you know, there might be a problem with it, them. You know, I'll, I'll just ex describe, we, ha we had one of these very real experiences with the client. So, because I, I want to make it less of a dream world and something we've actually done. Um, one of our clients leveraged independent item specific QR codes and they um, re released a brand new variety of berry to the market. It's a beautiful berry. They put it out in the market. They have these QR codes in each package and the consumers were invited to scan the QR code, you know, with the on the package, you'll see sometimes when you shop, it says, scan me or scan here. And they scanned it. And right there, it says, give us feedback. Mm. Tell us, do you like the berries? Are they good? Yeah. <laughs> are they pretty? Do they taste and good? And what was the conversion? Good? Did people do? I would assume that if people are going to go through the user journey of scanning, reading, getting to the point where, you know, they're 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 seeing the, the inquiry, like, we want your opinion. I'm assuming most folks would probably take the extra yeah. step and give you know, the opinion at that point. It's a huge berry company. And um, this was done several years ago. And um, there were, uh, you know, hundreds of thousands of um, iterations of feedback that were analyzed wow. during this process. There was enough for them to say that it, um, you know, to make some determination about the success of the variety release. You know, they said mm -hmm. the, the feedback gener in generalities, it came back and it said, the berry looks great on the shelf. I get it home. It degrades pretty quickly. Yeah. So the impact for our growers is like, wow, that technology, that feedback loop direct from the consumer in real time allowed yeah. them to very quickly make decisions about what do we do with a berry? How do we right. save money from a continued you know, fault in a, in a rollout or how do we improve it? How do we, you know, protect it um, and really protected their brand? It's an amazing, now, it's amazing too, because it's like grassroots and authentic approach to consumer research. Um, but, it, oh but it's also so sophisticated at the same time because it's like real time and it's, you know, I, it's directly tied to someone who made the purchase. I mean, it's really, it's, it's amazing what this technology has opened up for us all. Yeah. And just think about, um, you know, the, uh, the impact that this has when we look, you know, from the mom's perspective, right? Mm -hmm. So we just looked at the retailer gets all the benefit. They can get the feedback and they can, or not the retailer, rather the, the producer gets the benefit of the feedback and they can make some changes. But um, imagine for a second what it might look like if there was a safety recall or mm -hmm. you know, something happened. You and I have both been there. You're sitting watching the Today Show or something in the morning and it, and it pops up and it says, you know, so-and-so is issuing a recall on whatever the product is. And you go, whoa, where's my pen? Where's some people? Like, write it down. What was the skew on that? Where's mm -hmm. the, what's the website address? Call your friend. Did you see that? There's a recall on, you know, what are we going to do? Do you know which one it was? Because I just bought some of that. Do you know what store is it? What state was it? So you go looking for information. And you might just say, forget it. Just throw it out. Never mind. Just remind me never to buy that product again. Uh, whatever, or you go find the SKU, you have to confirm. What if you could walk right to your fridge, pull out that item, scan the QR code, and it comes up and it says in real time, because this information can be edited and updated and you can communicate with your consumer's package <laughs> or with your consumer via the package real time. Right. And it says, this item is healthy and wholesome and is not included in the recall. Yeah. Or this item is in the recall, please go visit your, your, your local store and have it exchanged out. It's the power of providing real-time access to data to the consumers and then getting real feedback from consumers. Um, and, you know, really it changes the total landscape when everybody kind of evolves and, you know, participates. So. Yeah. So how, how important is the consumer to well, iFood I mean, DS? I mean, you're very much... <laughs> <laughs> you are very much a supply chain technology, but how important is the end consumer? Yeah, for sure. You know, this is why we get up every day. This is why I came here, right? It's in our DNA. As I told you in the very beginning, the, the company started as a food safety company with a mission 
really to improve a safer supply chain, ultimately all for the consumer. iFood DS software systems promote advancement of continuous food safety and you know quality for the grower, right? All of that on the farm in processing facilities and all the way through the supply chain, but it's all with the sole effort of ensuring that you and I as moms, as consumers, can reach for healthy foods, healthy options for ourselves and for our families with confidence, getting confidence through transparency, complete transparency. I love it. So I love it too. Whether the information is going to be shared on individual items through QR codes, I mean, that's a little bit, that's advancement that we're getting to, and I think it'll be more prevalent, but I need the consumers to know that iFoodDS has them, you know, at the the, the center top of, of the core of, yeah. the, of the business, the top of mind. And, and we're working at all times to ensure that that our growers at the very basic level have the right tools to build a safer supply chain. I love that. Yeah, for sure. So Karen, you know, our our entire platform and purpose at the Produce Moms is, is for consumers, We uh, including this podcast. And so yeah. what do you want, what do you want listeners uh, and consumers to take away from today's episode? Well, if you if you're a consumer, I see I didn't know all this stuff until I just stepped into this space. So I I I try to talk shop all the time with all my girlfriends, all my fellow moms, um, so that they hear this. So I'm so again, I'm so grateful that you gave me the opportunity to share the good news with everybody. Our consumers, your consumers, your moms need to know that this information can be obtained. It's out there. Growing and production details, the little details from the beginning of the supply chain all the way through consumption can be obtained. Transparency, farm to fork isn't like a dream world. Like someday they'll be able to share it. It's a reality. Demand it. Ask for it. You know, look for the QR codes on your produce packaging. If Scan them. Go mm-hmm. out today mm-hmm. when you're shopping, scan it. Provide the feedback to the manufacturer saying, Thank you for sharing the information or I'd like to get more information. I know you have it. I know you can get it, right? Know that the technology is there to provide information. And, um, you know, I, I, I also just, I know this is for consumers. I want my really hardworking partners um, that may, you know, listen into your podcast as well. My supply chain growers, processors, packers, shippers, yeah. wholesalers, maybe moms that do both. I, I want to encourage everybody to really embrace the technology. Of course, iFoodDS has it now, right? Big flashing lights on my billboard. iFoodDS has it now, but there's a lot of really amazing companies with emerging tech, and we all need to work together to support this more transparent, safer supply chain. We have to do it. And if we all work together to access this technology, make transparency a reality, we will all benefit, consumers, moms, and everybody across the supply chain, from the enormous returns that it provides if we can just orchestrate it all correctly. That's right. Mm, that's so good. This is such a, it's been a, <laughs> such a great conversation. And I like so many of the episodes and so many of the amazing, passionate thought leaders that we bring on as our guests, I find myself full of hope and confidence in, in an industry Yay. that I truly love. So with that, Karen, I want to thank you. I want to thank the whole team at iFoodDS. I want to thank everyone that's working towards heightened transparency in our food and beverage supply chain, specifically everyone dedicated to the fresh produce sector. Um, and with that, Karen, you get the final remarks and the last goodbye to our listeners today. So thanks again for being our guest. For sure. Thank you so much, Lori. And thank you to everyone listening and really looking forward to working with our consumers. And as I said, everybody in between just to get it done. Have a great day. Stay stay safe and be kind. Thanks for joining us on this episode of the Produce Moms podcast. If you or someone you know would like to be a featured guest, just send an email to Lori at theproducemoms.com. We know there is a produce mom in you because there's a produce mom in all of us. Join our community on Facebook and all social platforms. Help us change the way America eats. Thanks again for listening and we'll see you next time. Mm